What's up guys, Justin here with thecgessentials.com back with another Blender tool tutorial. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to use the bridge edge loops function in order to loft shapes inside of Blender. So lofting is basically like creating a skin or an object from a series of edges inside of Blender. So I'm gonna teach you how to take those profiles and generate shapes using those objects. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So lofting is basically taking a series of 2D profiles like these and creating a 3D shape from them. So let's say for example that we tab into this object. You can see this object is just a series of circles, right? So that's all these are, They're, there's nothing special about them. But what we wanna do is we wanna select them all. So I'll go into edge select mode and just select all of these. And we wanna use a tool called bridge edge loops. So what that tool is going to do is that's gonna create a surface using the loops inside of our model. So I'm gonna do a control E to access this, that'll take us into the edge menu. And there's an option in here for bridge edge loops. And so you can see how this even tells us bridge edge loops is gonna create a bridge of faces between two or more selected edge loops. So if we click on this, you can see how this is going to generate a shape based on the profiles that we have in here. And if you look at this, you can see what this is doing. This is basically drawing edges between the different vertices. So it's using a mathematical function to figure out how to match those up. And it's drawing objects, or it's drawing edges and faces between the different vertices in here. So you can see how this gives us a number of different options, which we'll talk about in a minute. But just know for right now, all this does is this is going to create this, uh, this is gonna create this skin based on the profiles that we have in here. And so I'm gonna talk about these tools more in depth. Note that there is an excellent documentation page on Blender's website, um, which I will link to in the notes down below that documents what all these tools do as well. And so first thing I wanna talk about is making sure that your objects are set up correctly. And what I'm talking about there is specifically, if you draw a number of circles like this one, so what I did is I just drew some eight-sided circles and then I cut the top off of them. Um, these are all in here as different objects, right? You can see them all as different objects over here in my scene collection. Well, if I was to select all of these, cause you can do that in Blender 2.8, um, if I was to select all of these and tab into edit mode, like this so that I'm editing all of the objects at once and then try to use bridge edge loops, it's not going to work, right? So if I tap A in here and then I was to do a control E bridge edge loops, it's gonna give me this error, right? Because it says select at least two edge loops. And the reason for that is because these edge loops aren't actually in the same object. Right, So even though we have them all selected and we're in edit mode, you can see how it has a number of different objects in here all selected. But what we need to do instead is we need to tab back into object mode. We're just gonna take all of these, select them, and then do a control J. So if we do a control J with these selected, it's going to join all of those edges into a single object. So now, if I click on this, you can see how I only have this circle zero one object selected. There's not five or six different objects selected now. Well, now that I've joined these all into a single object, now if I tab into edit mode, tap A, and then do a control E, you can see how I can bridge all of these edge loops in here now to create my skin in here. So um, just note that you will get errors if you select multiple objects and then tab into edit mode. You need to have them all in the same object for this to work. And so now let's take a look at some of the options that show up when you run bridge edge loops. So the first one I wanna talk about is the way that it connects the loops. And for that, we'll go to this example right here. So when you first select an object and notice this is an object with a number of circles in it along a circular path and tab into it, and then you run bridge edge loops. So we'll just do a control E, bridge edge loops. Notice how right now I have a gap, right? And the reason I have a gap is because of this first option. So what this first option does is it gives me a drop down that allows me to select an open loop, a closed loop, or loop pairs. We're really gonna focus on the first two. The loop pairs is interesting and I'll show you that one, but these first two are gonna be the ones you use most of the time. And so in general, you wanna use open loop when you have something like one of these shapes over here, which is a shape that doesn't go in a circle and need to close, right? So over here, for example, this one just needs to draw a skin along a path. Well, this one over here though is creating a circular shape and it needs to close this in. So when we run this tool, 
what we want to do is do a control E, bridge edge loops, and for this one, we want to select closed loop. The reason we want to select closed loop is because that's going to go through and not only is it going to bridge the edge loops all the way along the path, it's also going to take your first and second profile and it's going to bridge the gap between those two objects as well. So if you have something that runs in a circle and you want it to try to close this in, then you can use this tool in order to do that. So that's your connect loops and real quick, let's uh, tab into this object. So if we were to select this and run bridge edge loops, the loop pairs, so the loop pairs is going to connect each even count of loops individually. So I'm not 100% sure when you would use something like that, but it is in here as an option. So just be aware that there is an option in here for this. In general though, for a shape like this one, you're just gonna wanna, gonna wanna select open loop. So now let's take a look at the second option, which is merge. And so merge, works not works on as many curves with the same number of vertices as you want to select. So let's say for example, that instead of selecting all of these and running bridge edge loops, we were to select just these two curves right here. Well now if we were to run that, we were to click on this merge option. So right now what it's doing is it's creating a face, right? But if we check the box for merge, what it's gonna do is it's gonna take those two curves and merge them together. And then this merge factor is gonna affect how far towards the first or second curve um, this object is. So you can see how if I set this to one, it's gonna be placed where the second curve was. If I put it to zero, it's gonna be placed where the first curve was. And then if I put a value in between, you can set where exactly that is. So you can set it so that it's like halfway by typing in a merge factor of 0.5 or something like that. So this can be useful if you do need to merge some um, curves together inside of an object instead of having to go through and mess around with, you know, duplicating them and de then deleting the others, you can use the merge function in here in order to do that. All right, so twist, is gonna add a turn to your shape. So let's say we have this shape like this one right here, and let's go ahead and do a control E, click on bridge edge loops. If you set twist, what that's gonna do is that's going to set this so that instead of the objects running straight between one vertex and the other, right? So if I do this, they're just gonna run straight. If I set my twist to one, really what that's doing is that's taking these and it's twisting them. So that instead of these running straight, they're running with a twist. And so what that allows you to do is that allows you to twist your object like this one. And so if you add multiple different twists in here, you can see how you can get different shapes, but you start getting really weird meshes in here as well. So I rarely take this beyond one or two, um, just because the geometry starts getting really unpredictable, but the twist function is going to allow you to add that turn to your objects. So number of cuts is going to set the number of intermediates that are placed in here. So right now, right, if you look at this object, basically what this is doing is this is drawing an edge between every one of the vertices in here, but it's just drawing kind of a straight line, meaning this isn't a very detailed or smooth looking shape. Well, if you turn the number of cuts up, what that's gonna do is that's gonna start adding intermediate cuts in between your edges that were in here. So with the intermediate cuts, what that means is that means that first of all, you get more detail, right? So when you get more detail, that means that your shape has more uh, topology in here that you can edit and adjust, but it also gives this more geometry to work with when it's interpolating the shapes, right? So when it's figuring out like how your surface is going to look, the more cuts you have in here, the more um, geometry that's in here that the algorithm can use in order to adjust things like smoothness and other things like that. So if you wanna add more detail, turn your number of cuts up. So the interpolation is going to affect more how these are calculated, right? So if you change these, for example, the interpolation here, what this is gonna do is this is basically just gonna make these linear, right? And I'm gonna turn my smoothness down to like zero just for right now, we'll talk about that in a second. But what that means is that means that you're gonna get more of a straight line between the edges. So it's a lot more visible if you were to set this to a lower number of cuts. So, or if you were to set this to like a blend path or blend surface, you can see how this is giving you a little bit of curve between the edges. If you set more of a linear, what it's gonna do is it's gonna draw more of a straight line between your different curves in here. So um, usually with my interpolation, I usually end up using the blend surface, but let's turn my cuts back up and look at this. So if you were to select the blend path, 
that's going to dictate the direction of the edges that are created in here based on the path between the objects. So you can see how for me, the blend path is giving me a little bit more of like a jump in here between my different edges. So usually I end up picking the blend surface because that gives me more of a straight up and down, like smooth um, transition between my different edges in here. So usually I end up either picking the linear or the blend surface. I don't use the blend path very often. Um, so that's gonna affect the shape of your object. Smoothness is gonna allow you to affect the way that this is uh, transitioning between the curves on your edges, right? So if I take my smoothness all the way to the left, so a smoothness value of zero is gonna give me a very different shape than a smoothness value of two, right? And really what it's doing is it's, it's kind of smoothing out the geometry that's created in here around your curves. So you can see how this is almost effectively more like pulling this tight along the curves that we have in here, where over here you get a much smoother um, transitional shape. So you can really affect the way this is going to look by adjusting your smoothness in here. So the profile factor option is going to affect because what this is doing is this is basically creating intermediate edges between your curves right so you can use this profile factor to affect how far out or in these go so you can use a negative value to have this go in between your different curves and notice how at a certain point these kind of overlap each other but a lower value is going to make these go in while a higher value is going to make this go out so you can really affect the way that your created shape is going to look by adjusting this profile factor value and that's basically just an in out value is all that that is and then the last option is going to affect the fall off of the shape. And so there's actually a pretty good page on the Blender um, documentation, which I will link to in the notes down below, that's gonna show you kind of what the different fall offs are going to do. So this is very similar um, and their documentation page for the bridge edge loops function actually links to this page. But you can see how with the spherical, right, you're gonna get more of a curve along here or like a sharp fall off, you're gonna get things that come more to a point. So by selecting the different options in here, you can see how you can really affect the way your shape is going to look. Usually I use this in conjunction with the smoothness value and the profile factor in order to really affect what my shape is going to look like. You can affect the shape of your profile by selecting different options in here. So one practical application that I wanted to talk about. So you can use this in order to patch holes or gaps in objects. So let's say for example that I created this shape and I've got a gap between this object here and this object here. Well, what you can do is you can use this by doing an alt shift click and selecting these two edge loops. You can select these two edge loops and then do a control E bridge edge loops. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow you to patch in a shape in here. And this is gonna work a lot better if these have the same number of vertices. So usually with something like this, you've probably extruded it from the same circle anyway. But notice how you can use this in order to either patch in a hole or you could also start adding detail, right? So you can see I could add a number of different cuts in here and you can adjust things like your profile factors and other things like that in order to create different kinds of shapes. So for example, if I just wanted to patch this straight in, I would just set my profile factor to zero. I would set my interpolation to linear. And all that's gonna do is that's just gonna draw a straight line across here and add detail based on my number of cuts. But if I wanted this to move in or out, I could start adjusting this profile factor as well as the way this is interpolated in order to get different shapes. So depending on what you're trying to do, you could do a lot of different things with this tool. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Are you using this tool? Do you have any questions about it? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.